Hi, it's Tom. I promised I wanted to share something with you this week that I think can make a real difference in terms of you switching off the old patterns, the old habits, and the old beliefs about what you're worthy of, what you're capable of. Because we know, right, as we study brutal honesty and we become more aware of our own magnificence and a desire to really accept that magnificence moving forward with everything we do, because if indeed we apply the concept, we apply the belief that we have magnificence in us, that we have that, we were born with it, and we're capable of really sharing that with the world. But we've got to believe it. And as we move forward, what's going to happen is, with that desire, things are going to start getting in the way. That little inner voice is going to want to stop you from really moving forward and manifesting that magnificence. So I've got a tool for you. I'm here in the gym, obviously, and there's lots of stuff here. I mean, there's literally hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of equipment, including these little medicine balls, which work terrific. But that's not what we're going to use today. What we're going to use today to help really create or interrupt those old neural pathways, those old patterns. Because what are patterns, really? They're habits, right? They're habits in terms of our behaviors. They're habits in terms of our thinking. They're habits in terms of our beliefs. And those patterns were based on some of the beliefs that we developed early on in life that, you know, maybe abundance isn't what I really want. Maybe I need to work hard to create, you know, a stability in my life, to create wealth in my life. Or maybe there's a fear around taking a step forward, about taking that giant leap of faith. You know, we all have those old patterns and beliefs that we take forward with us or have taken forward with us from our childhood. And a lot of it shows up. We talked about how it shows up a little bit. And in many cases, it shows up as that little inner voice. That little thing that pops into your head anytime you're standing on that precipice, ready to step forward, ready to step outside your comfort zone, or take a risk, or take that giant leap of faith in your life. That little inner voice pops up and says, wait a second, you remember the last time you tried to do this? Oh, wait a second, you're not good enough for that. Wait, you're not smart enough. You're not wealthy enough. You don't deserve that. Whatever it is, whatever that deception is based on that old misconception that you need to be more, you need to be better in order to have what it is that you want, in order to be loved, that'll pop up in your own little you know, mind and start to distract you from stepping forward, from taking that leap of faith, you might say. So what we want to do is we want to interrupt that pattern. Now, we've learned a lot about identifying it, and I just shared some things. As soon as you go to take that leap of faith, as soon as you step forward, you know, the old saying, the old uh, joke, why did the chicken cross the road? Well, in our case, if we're the chickens, we want the results that are on the other side of the road, yes? But it's when we step up to that curb and we see the traffic going by, that's when we become a little bit chicken. And it's not because you weren't born with courage and the ability to really take that step. It's simply because those old patterns, those old habits, those old beliefs come up and keep you from stepping forward. You're going to get hit by a car if you go out there. And yet what we want is on the other side. It's right there. We can taste it. We can feel it. It's within our grasp. But yet we can't get across that road. So what we want to do now that we've identified, you've had a month or so to identify some of those old beliefs that represent the great misconception. Something less than your core truth, your magnificence. Now that you've had some time to identify how that shows up in terms of your little inner voice and your results, let's do some things now to disrupt that pattern, to shake it up, you might say, rattle the cage, and really disrupt those old neural pathways. Because that's all they are. They're old neural pathways. You made a connection between an experience and a decision. And you internalize that as some kind of internal language, some kind of dialogue, you might say, that you might have, or a monologue that you have with yourself. You know, and that same experience or something that represents it shows up again, and there it goes. It fires up that same neural pathway, that same sy synaptic connection. And the chemicals of fear or anxiety or trepidation are released into the body and hold you back from stepping forward. That's all it is. It's not you. It's just a belief that you hold about what you're capable of doing. So let's interrupt that pattern. You've identified it. For me, for years, I wasn't smart enough. And that's what would come up. As soon as I had an opportunity to move forward or, or associate with, develop with, work with people that were smart, that would come into my head. You're not smart enough for that. And for years, it held me back. So what is it for you? Think about that for a moment. 
What's that little inner voice saying to you? What does it do to stop you from taking that leap? What does it do to stop you from stepping off the curb and getting to the other side of the street for crying out loud and turns you into a chicken, right? If you're Michael J. Fox from Back to the Future, you don't want to be called a chicken. That's what really fired him up. And maybe you need something to fire you up as well. So let's do that. So amongst these hundreds of thousands of dollars of equipment, I've got what I believe to be one of the most valuable pieces of equipment on my wrist right now. No, it's not a watch to tell me what time it is. But if it did, it would say, it's time to go. It's time to step up. It's time to take action. And then I hear that little inner voice. It is the other tool on the other wrist that's going to make the difference. And this one was actually free. Now, you could invest in one of these, but you can buy some broccoli, eat some healthy food. And along with it, you're going to get one of these little rubber bands, right? These little rubber bands that hold the broccoli or the asparagus, or whatever it is. Or if you, maybe you've got some thick, heavy rubber bands at home that might just fit around the wrist. These little blue ones that we get with our fruits and vegetables are the perfect size. And as I said, they are worth a fortune in their ability to disrupt the old patterns and the old beliefs. And here's how it works. And then I'm going to ask you to put it into action over the next two weeks. Are you ready? So, as soon as I go to take that giant leap of faith, as soon as I make that decision, I'm going to move forward. And it might be something small. Maybe it's just making a phone call. Maybe it's just creating a connection. Or talking to someone that I, would, you know, I had a little trepidation, a little fear, a little anxiety about talking to that person. And I need to step up and make that happen now. Something you've been putting off. And that little inner voice pops up and you recognize it now. What is it saying to you? You're not smart enough, you're not good enough, you're not tall enough, you're not short enough, you're not good looking enough. Whatever it says to you, and however you interpret it, as soon as you hear it, here's what I want you to do. You're going to take this rubber band and you're going to snap it. Oh, yeah, it hurts without question. So as soon as I hear that little inner voice say to me, Tom, you're not smart enough to do this. I immediately stop and bam. I did this one time to the point where I bled. And I gotta tell you something, it changed quite a bit. It changed that neural pathway. All we're doing is disrupting the neural pathway. Remember the body connection, the body rapport component? Our, our, every cell of our body holds memories. Every cell of our body holds those disempowering beliefs and those patterns within them. If we can disrupt from a physical standpoint, it connects to the mind and the entire neural pathway shifts, changes, gets shut down you might say and after a while boom a new one develops so there's two parts to this the, the first is identifying recognizing when that little inner voice pops in and taking the action i'm not smart enough really bam ah! the second is to reinforce what you want to believe to create the old neural pathway reassociate back into the action you were about to take and then say i am smart enough in fact I'm a freaking genius bam and then hug yourself pat yourself on the chest do something physically to celebrate that new neural pathway to celebrate that new belief you got it so there's two steps first identify recognize when that little inner voice that little component of the great misconception is appearing and trying to take you out of the game you take action here I go again I've disrupted that neural pathway completely, and it's called pain aversion. I want to avoid that pain. So to do so, I disconnect. I don't want to have that thought anymore. Every time I have that thought, it represents pain. So after two weeks or so, yeah, you're going to be black and blue. Yeah, you might even be bloody. But you'll disrupt it and create a new connection. That thought represents pain. Now, we know it already represents pain. We know it represents failure. We know it represents holding you back and fear, right? But let's get it connected physically to the body. So that's the first step. The second step is to now identify, which you've already done, what it is that you truly believe about yourself. What it is that you want to create a deeper, deeper connection with. At the core, I am smart enough. I am a genius and capable of achieving anything I put my mind to. And then I, wow, I either hug myself, pat myself on the back, or do something connected. Yes, yes. Some physical action to anchor. Because again, we want to anchor the new association, the new belief with that pattern of taking action. Got it? Step one. Here we go again. Oh my God, can you see this? I'm already, look at this, look at this, look at this. Uh, maybe you can't see. There's no blood yet, but we're going to keep trying. <laughs> so the first thing, I'm ready to take a step. I'm ready to take a step forward. 
I'm ready to take that giant leap of faith. I'm standing on the curb, waiting to get to the other side of the street, and I'm seeing the traffic going by. I'm like, I can't do this. I'm not smart enough to get by this traffic. I can't do it. There it is. Boom! Ah! Yes, I am smart enough. Yes, I'm a genius, and bam! I can do anything I put my mind to. Got it? Now, the more you do this out loud, physically expressing this, the better. Of course, some people might think you're an absolute lunatic and uh, call the DA's office, but at, at that point, maybe you're in public, keep it to yourself. Just kind of do the flick, oh, there it is, and then say everything you need to to yourself, and maybe just a little pat on the chest. You'll start to anchor the new belief, the new pattern, and you're uh, strengthening your ability and your courage in moving forward. Because uh, the last part of this, is to take the action you're going to take anyway, to move forward. Remember when that little inner voice, we talked about this, steps up, wants to get in your way? We used to say, thank you for sharing, and then take action anyway. This is going a step further. This is using one of the most valuable pieces of equipment you'll ever own, right here. And you keep this on your wrist, even after we've done the training for two weeks, because this is going to be a reminder. You can keep it on for another week or two after. This is going to be a reminder every time you see it. You don't even need to snap it anymore. Every time that little thing pops up, it'll be less and less and less and less frequent. When it does pop up, you just look at your wrist and you give yourself a reminder. I am smart enough. I'm a genius and I can do anything I put my mind to. Whatever that is for you. All right? And then take action anyway. Move forward. I love you guys. I know you have magnificence in you and it's time to bring it forth to the world to inspire others. All right, we'll talk soon. Again, Tom Tewilliger, the Achievement Mentor. Looking forward to seeing you soon.